Hi there and welcome back. Let us look at a cooling tower calculation. The calculation is very simple and straightforward. But before we get into the calculations, let us look at some few terminologies. What is a cooling tower? Well, a cooling tower acts like a heat exchanger because it does change a temperature from a higher temperature profile to a lower temperature profile. So a cooling tower will lower the temperature of water by bringing air and water into direct contact together. A little amount of water will be evaporated. Some will be lost through drifting or through a concept known as blow down. Let's define some few terminologies. Approach. Approach is the difference between the wet bulb temperature and the cold water leaving the cooling tower back into our system temperature. The wet bulb temperature is the lowest temperature that water can supposedly attain through evaporation. Cooling range. It is the temperature difference between the hot water entering the cooling tower system and the cold water that has been cooled off by our cooling tower system. Now these three, the relationship between approach wet bulb and our range can give us a rough estimate of our cooling efficiency blow down this is when we intentionally discharge water from our system to regulate any form of salts or impurities that might be concentrated in it coc it's the comparison of dissolved solids in the makeup water with solids concentrated through evaporation in the circulating water through the system the term drift refers to water that has been drifted out of our system and into the atmosphere and makeup water it's basically the water that we account for for all the losses that occurred through drifting evaporation or blow down okay now let us be practical say we live in a city called cape town and the humidity there it's roughly around 68 with an estimated evaporation factor of 0 0.85 predictive humidity of roughly 68 percent we can then assume or go to a graph and get a rough estimate of our wet bulb temperature and if you go on your graph there, you might get, I don't know about you, but I got 65 Fahrenheit, which if you um, convert to degrees Celsius, can give you 18.33 degrees Celsius. Next step will be to get the efficiency. Now to get the efficiency, first let's get the approach, which is the difference between the cold water temperature and the wet bulb temperature. Let's estimate a cold temperature of 15 degrees and a hot temperature of 30 degrees. What do we mean by that? The hot temperature, it's basically the temperature that's coming from our system to be cooled in the cooling tower. And once our cooling tower has done its work, we will get a lower temperature, hence our water has been cooled off to 15 degrees Celsius. So get your approach range, hence now we can get the efficiency. Now that we have the efficiency, let's get the water lost through evaporation. There's various equations that you can use here. The first equation, let's look at it. It has a factor of 0 0.0085 multiplied by 1.8 and the circulation rate. Our circulation rate here, we can estimate it to be 800 multiply by the temperature difference. Punch everything to your calculator and you should get your answer in form of meter cubed per hour. You can also get it in a form of liters per min or 2.72 liters per second. Now equation two accounts for the circulation rate, temperature difference, specific heat capacity of water and its latent heat. If you punch everything into your calculator, you should get an answer. And lastly, there's the third option to get evaporation loss, whereby it just looks at the evaporation factor, the circulation rate and the change in temperature divide by a thousand if you punch everything to your calculator you get the water lost to evaporation in the form of meter cubed per hour assume that the third equation is more accurate and efficient let's work with it moving forward now for the blow down blow down it's the relationship between evaporation loss and coc minus one now let's assume a cycle of concentration of eight and for each option let's calculate the evaporation loss remember for option one evaporation loss we got 9.79 hence we punched everything to the calculator and you get a blow down of 1.40 do the same thing for all three options again we are going to assume the third evaporation loss was the accurate equation here hence let's move forward with the blow down option three as well now let's calculate the water lost through drifting or droplets we can say this will be 0.1 percent of our circulation rate hence 0 0.001 multiplied by 800 the final step now is to get the makeup water this is the water that will slowly enter our cooling tower to constantly make up for any losses that we are losing so that the water balances within our system this will be made up of the water lost through evaporation water loss through drifting and water loss through blowdown. If you add everything together, it should give you roughly 12.46 meter cubed per hour. Basically, we have to make up 12.46 meter cubed for every hour of water that we lose in this particular cooling tower system. Thank you so much for watching. Till next time. Bye.